Welcome to the Maria Liberati Show, where food meets art, travel, and life, and where we answer the question, what does food mean to you? Hope you're having a fantastic week cooking your way, if you're on the East Coast, through this snowstorm that we have. It seems like it's a continuing snowstorm, and I know I have been cooking my way through the snowstorm, and if you have any recipes that you've put together or special dishes you would like to share, hashtag the Maria Liberati Show, share on social media. If we share your photo on my website, we will send you as a thank you um, an autographed copy of one of my books from the Gourmand World Winning Book Series, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking. And you know, you can find my books anywhere books are sold online and at marialiberati.com. They are not just recipe books, they're culinary memoirs. So they have lots of really interesting stories along with the recipes. And you can find out all about me and my life and, and some interesting, interesting, really charming stories that you'll like to go along with your recipes. So there are many books in the Basic Art of Italian Cooking series. There's also the Basic Art of series, and you can find that, again, at marialiberati.com or anywhere books are sold. Today's special guest coming up on this segment is Salvador Russo TAC, who's the president of the USA Company of Bono Extra Virgin Olive Oil, which is from Sicily. And, you know, I mentioned I've been cooking my way through the snowstorm while I have been using their oil. It's just fantastic. It's phenomenal. Extra Virgin Olive Oil is one of the super health foods that are available to us. And this is definitely a high quality product. It adds such a great flavor to anything you're cooking. Just simple vegetables sautéed with the extra virgin, with Bono extra virgin olive oil and garlic is just unbelievable. So that's all I'll say about that. So stay tuned for Salvatore Russo TAC. And he's going to help us on letting us know how to choose your olive oil, what you should look for in olive oils. So what does food mean to you? Food means art as well. From quaint to elaborately staged portraits of banquets, when it comes to painting food, each brushstroke has intention. Food's always been a staple of culture and the subject of countless pieces of art. And while fads and portrayals of food have evolved from still life like Caravaggio's fruit basket from about 1595, the year 1595, to the glossy advertisements of the 19th 50s to today's high def and meticulously composed Instagram posts, some things always remain consistent. Food is displayed with specific aesthetic goals in mind and the intent to be visually captivating. And the Renaissance was no different, similar to advertisements in the perfected art of the promotional Insta dish. Food had subliminal meanings, associations, and significance in Renaissance paintings. So what does food mean to you? Food is art. And let's start with the fruit. Probably the most recognizable examples of food and Renaissance art are the baskets and armfuls of fruit. But have you ever wondered why certain fruits were portrayed in, in certain paintings? The main reason is the symbolism. For example, apples were the infamous fruit used to symbolize the food that tempted Eve out of the Garden of Eden, as well as an object that signaled beauty, health, and power. The role of the apple in Renaissance art changed with trends, epics, and styles, and it was painted by artists including Sandro Botticelli, Peter Paul Rubens and Rembrandt. Pomegranates and pears were also used for their symbolism, including associations with fertility due to their round shape, as well as the seeds of the pomegranate. Oranges were another fruit of the artistic movement, but in paintings such as Botticelli's Primavera and Domenico Veneziano's St. Lucy altarpiece, the orange alludes to the de' Medici family, a powerful Florentine family who held enormous prestige and influence in Italy from the 14th to the 18th century. Resembling the brightly colored spheres on the de' Medici coat of arms, the orange was known as the malus medicus or the medicinal apple. Whether to remind viewers of virtues, 
and biblical allegories represent beauty and luck or allude to prominent figures in society, fruit was part of a rich visual language in Renaissance art. Another use of food in Renaissance paintings was to showcase abundance and flaunt wealth and prosperity. This can be seen in works such as Still Life with Parrots by John Davids, where the exotic bird stands perched atop a large spread of ripe fruit and expensive meats. Silver candelabras and plates are also present in the scene as well as oysters. It appears exceedingly ostentatious to the average person of that time. Frescoes by artists such as Cristofano Gerardi also highlighted the wide variety of ancient fruits, meats, and vegetables. Elaborate banquets and other scenes were portrayed containing invaluable insights into Italy's past biodiversity. Agronomists have identified hundreds of Renaissance era fruits, herbs, and vegetables using clues depicted in Renaissance frescoes and paintings well preserved in Italy's palazzos and museums, some of which the fruits, herbs, and vegetables that we cannot find today. So we have to wonder if those frescoes could tell us something about ancient varieties. When we look at the vibrant frescoes that decorate many venues and institutions of the Renaissance era, we can see a variety of foods portrayed, grains, fruits, fish, and others. Many of these scenes were painted with scientific accuracy and with inspiration from real life, including those by students of 16th century artist and historian Giorgio Vasadi. Vasadi encouraged his pupils to choose real fruits as subjects. Gerardi painted cucumbers, melons, or pumpkins after studying them in real life, so they must have grown in nearby farms. One Renaissance artist in particular went as far as to paint fantastical portraits using food to recreate the features of the subject's face. Giuseppe Archimboldo began his career as a stained glass and fresco designer. He eventually landed the position of court portraitist to Emperor Maximilian II of the Holy Roman Empire in 1562. Archimboldo was renowned during his life and his artwork eventually inspired the surrealists of the 20th century. And Archimboldo portrayed Emperor Maximilian as virtual the Roman god of the four seasons, using produce from each season and showcasing the age of abundance that supposedly took place under his rule. Using food aesthetics to induce a fear of missing out did not begin with the Instagram snapshot, although the latter is certainly quicker to produce. In 2016, the Cornell Food Lab released a study looking at the history of food and modern art. The team concluded after studying studying art for the 500 years between 1500 and 2000 that food images have historically been more about conveying wealth and status rather than documenting what foods people of that time traditionally ate. In general, the paintings tend to feature meals with foods that were either aspirational to the commissioning family, aesthetically pleasing, or technically difficult for the painter to produce. And some of the food that was depicted encoded cultural, religious, or political information for informed viewers. This flaunting of wealth and status took place in a variety of ways, most common of which was in the inclusion of exported and non-native foods, which would be a luxury at the time. So this was seen in the introduction of lemons in more than half of the Dutch paintings studies, as well as olives that were seen in many paintings except those from their native Italy. Much like Serendipity 3's Golden Opulent Sunday, if you remember that back a few years ago, featuring 23 karat gold leaf and caviar and costing a hefty four grand, that became a benchmark for posh New York City culinary tourism snapshots. These painted scenes were used as a way to show off wealth and prosperity, or at least inspire a sense of awe amongst the viewer. So consider next time that you're looking at a foodie's Instagram photos or reaching for an exotic fruit at your local market or centering your plate for that perfect photo, you're taking part in a rich and long-standing cultural tradition. 
We're talking to Salvatore Russo TAC, president of the USA um, portion of the Bono Extra Virgin Olive Oil Company. And Salvatore, he gave us some great tips on um, how to choose your olive oil. But Salvatore, you know, in Italy, I know they there's always, it's really popular to do olive oil tasting similar to the wine tastings here in the USA. And people are stuck at home now. Um, can you give us any ideas on doing maybe an olive oil tasting at home? People are looking for new things to do, new activities. Yes, olive oil tasting is a really cool activity to do during this lockdown pa- pandemic that we're unfortunately still in here. Yes. An olive oil tasting is something really cool. could be done you know, within your family at home or even virtually on a Zoom or, or, or the same way you could do a cooking class and olive oil tasting can be done as well. Mm-hmm. Some quick tips for you, for, for, the, for the listeners on, a, on an olive oil tasting. A really cool way to do it and the way the professionals do it is to do it blindly. So the professionals use a blue cup. If you've ever seen it, they use mm-hmm. like a dark blue cup because color does not matter in extra virgin olive oil. Uh-huh. Another big myth we're doing a a lot of myth busted here today, yes. Maria. Another mm. big myth is the color. The color does not matter. That's why they usually put it in a blue glass. Uh-huh. The reason being is because the human brain, uh-huh. much like breathing, it's second nature to look at a color of something and automatic associate it with quality or not quality. Uh-huh. You may not mean to do it. You're going to do it automatically. So yeah. uh, it would be really cool to do like a blind tasting. So whether you put mm-hmm. it in a blue cup, many people probably don't have blue cups at home. So right. maybe you... You hide the cup with, with a napkin around it, almost uh-huh. as if like when you drink coffee, right? And it's hot. Yes. So if there's a way you can make the color not stand out while you're doing it is a great first step. Mm-hmm. Then you want to do something what I call utilize the four S's. Swirl, snip, slurp, and swallow. So take it from the top. The first thing when you pour the extra virgin olive oil is you want to swirl it, okay? And you want to warm it up because what that does is it brings out the aroma. So the first step in a tasting is actually not the tasting, it's actually the smelling. Because you want to, you want to use your uh, smelling sense to uh, attain the positive attributes of the oil. Mm-hmm. Some of the positive attributes that you will attain by sniffing a quality oil is grassy, tomato, artichoke. Those are some of the many different features and, and verbiage and correlations that we use to describe it. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of a smell if you close your eyes that you want to try to attain. The sniff, the smells that you want to avoid are a wood, nickel, musty, fusty smell. If you've ever maybe even smelled your your hands after after you know having coins and pennies in, in mm-hmm. your hands, those are the kind of smells you want to avoid. That means that the pro- quality of the product is good and uh-huh. it does not pass organoleptic testing. Try to buy a single origin product. And if you can, to take it a step further, I always recommend a PDO or PGI certified product. As you mentioned, we just had a short chat on your Facebook Live. Explain a PDO, protected designation of origin, and a PGI, protected geographical indication, certified oil, is a third-party certification that comes from an unbiased source that is not, you know, does not have ownership, does not work for, or does not have any ties to the particular company in which they're certifying, which is important right? Integrity is very important. This third-party certification guarantees two very important parameters, quality and traceability. Uh, Traceability from the first day the olive grew on the tree to the day the oil is bottled with a certified number on each bottle as well, like we talked about a few minutes ago. And aside from the traceability, which is important and guarantees, you know, uh, guarantees you're getting what you are paying for. It also guarantees quality because there's very stringent quality parameters to attain those certifications. So in summary, Maria, I suggest a couple things. An extra virgin, a single origin, a PDO or PGI certified where possible. Mm-hmm. And it's very easy to find those these days as more and more stores are carrying PDO, PGI certified. And you do want to look for the newest harvest on the back. There's usually a harvest date. Uh-huh. And it'll tell you the harvest. So harvest means, for example, although we're in 2021, this is the harvest of 2020 because harvest happens at the end of the year. So that's an important point. We don't want uh, we want to be clear about it. It could be a little confusing. A harvest 2020 is what you're going to find on the shelf this year in 2021. Mm-hmm. So you want new harvest. You want dark bottle where possible as well. Mm-hmm. You want single origin and PDO, PGI certified where you can. Wow. So. The initial, um, 
verbiages that I use, those are the ones you want to look for and beyond. So you swirl it and you heat it up in the palm of your hand uh -huh. so that the aromas come out. You want to warm it up for the aromas. And after that, then you want to put a little bit in your mouth and you want to slurp it through your through two front teeth like you do in a wine tasting or like you do when you aerate something and combine it with a saliva. Uh -huh. Again, much like warming it up, what that does is that gets the senses to come out of the product so that your, in this case, your set, your taste can, can call those out. Again, you want to look for some of the verbiages we spoke about. Mm -hmm. After the slurp, a little swallowing of, of what you put in your mouth. Again, don't put too much in because otherwise, you know, olive oil is not a drink, not an energy drink there. So <laughs> that's how you want to do a really quick, uh, uh, easy olive oil tasting. You want to do it straight. There's nothing wrong with tasting it with bread. However, a true olive oil tasting gets done straight. Yeah. And you always want to remember the four S's we discussed. That's great. Thank you so much. And thanks for, for doing some myth busting because I know especially people think Think that color thing about the yellows, the greens, and all that. But uh, thanks, thanks for uh, doing some myth busting for us, Salvatore. I know this is a busy time of the year for you, so I don't want to take up too much of your time. But I just wanted you to, uh, well, first of all, wanted to ask the last question that I always ask my guests first is, um, what does food mean to you? That's a great question, Maria. Um, and, and again, thank you for having me on. It's no problem to take some time out of my day. I love doing these things. Yeah. And I love speaking with you more about olive oil. And I love myth busting because I think that's really important. Uh, and I think that really helps provide an educated consumer to really know what, what to look for and what to do. And I, I think that just provides a great sense of relief and passion and accomplishment for people when when we do this myth bust. It, it does. It really, it really does. And that helps because the one thing just, I just want to mention quickly is that, you know, people don't realize olive oil isn't just olive oil. There are so, such a variety of, and when people talk about, you know, these, the flavors and the tastes that are just unbelievable, you know, they have to know how to, where to find that. It's not just because you buy olive oil that you're going to get a great, you know, flavor. You have to know how to choose your olive oil. And I, you know, exactly that's right. the secret. So thank you for, for sharing that with everyone. People don't realize that. Yeah. Yeah. I think we shared a lot of great information yes. here today on that, but I want to do want to answer your question. Yeah. Oh, it's yes. a great one. What does food mean to you? So food for me is life is, is how I always describe it. Life in, in terms of what I do for a living on a daily basis, yes. what I need, what all of us need to do every day. We need to eat food to, to, to live, to continue on, to have the energy to do the other things we love in life. So for me, uh, food and extra virgin olive oil in particular is my life and my passion. Yeah. And I always, every day when I wake up, consider myself lucky to be someone that absolutely loves what they do. Mm -hmm. and someone who looks forward to getting up every morning and take on the day professionally doing what they love. Wow. Um, furthermore, as I, as I hope I, I, I exhume in, in this call is, you know, I enjoy educating people about extra virgin olive oil because it, I, I think it really is the single greatest superfood available to us. The health benefits are just endless. And it just seems as more time goes on, Maria, the more uh -huh. health benefits that come out, wow. whether it be the fight uh, against Alzheimer's, Right. Whether it be how good it is for your skin, yeah. whether it be how good the Mediterranean diet as an overall is for your health. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if you ever see those blue zones they talk about, yes. the blue zones yeah. is where people live the longest. And it's always in the places where uh, it's the Mediterranean diet that is that is most prevalent. Yes. And that's actually olive oil is, is the only oil that I use in my kitchen because of that, because I, I tend to, I try to keep a healthy version of food. I try to keep it healthier in, you know, in, in a, in a good sense. And from all my research, olive oil is the, you know, always comes out as far superior to anything else. So you are absolutely right. And thanks for bringing that out. Also, Salvatore, where can people um, purchase this or find it online or? Yeah. So w one more point I will add. Oh, to yes. What you said. Ahead. What we like to say, Maria, and uh -huh. I think you're going to love it, you're going to start saying it yourself. Yes. Extra virgin olive oil is the ultimate embodiment of the Mediterranean diet. It's at the core of the diet. So yes. that just really ties a bow on what we we're saying here. Yes. And I think it's just uh, the old saying, the proof is in the pudding, right? Yes. Extra virgin yes. olive oil is is really the, the ultimate embodiment of the diet. Yes. So 
you know, with that being said, I, I, I think the, the, I think your listeners are going to be very excited to, to try the product and yes. to really, uh, you know, take, take home what we discussed here today. So yes. in regards to my product, my Bono product, B-O-N-O, which you held up in our Facebook live call yes. uh, not long ago, yes. our product is available on Amazon. It's okay. available at Whole Foods nationally. Uh-huh. And I will tell you, we have a website www.bonousainc.com uh-huh. on our website there's a store locator very up-to-date advanced store locator Correct. which you could plug in my current location or your zip code whichever you'd like okay. and it will tell you within a radius of your location where you can buy so if you're in the northeast it'll tell you Wegmans and Stop and Shop and Whole Foods yes. and Acme and Kings and Balducci's uh-huh. If you're on the West Coast, you got Vons and Pavilions and Bristol Farms. If you're in Texas, we're in Central Market. Um, you know, if you're in uh, Louisiana, we're in Rouse's. So uh, if you're in Seattle, we're in Safeway. So on and on and on. Okay. Based off your location, you could very easily see Midwest, we're in Meyer. So I'm just naming some of the bigger yes. ones. Yes, no, that's um, great. Whole Foods is national. So that's always something very easy yes, to, that's to a, say on yes. the call. Mm-hmm. And yes, yeah, so... Again, use the store locator on our website, www.bonousainc.com. Great. Yes, because we're saying olive oil olive oil is healthy. But again, as we've pointed out, it has to be a high quality olive oil because not all olive oils are equal. So, you know, you're not going to find many out there with a, uh, a number that you can trace like Bono has in the back and, you know, you can trace everything about it and, and something that's produced like an artist, you know, as an artisan olive oil, that's really the key, I think, to getting something that's healthy for you, which I know you'll agree. And, and uh, you know, I know you guys are doing that with Bono olive oil. So you're keeping it, you know, it's definitely high quality. I just want to ask you real quick. So you sent me, oh, these ultra delicious preserves lemons and oranges do you guys also have that on your website yes so oh my gosh we are a we are a sicilian extra virgin olive oil company based in sicily right being based in sicily we always want to give back to the land and yes and and focus on the land so with that being said we have sicilian mm-hmm. extra virgin olive oil mm-hmm. another thing that's very popular famous and good in sicily is the citrus fruits yes. sicily is known for its citrus fruits orange, lemon, and blood orange, namely. Mm -hmm. So what we decided to do was launch alongside our olive oil, three beautiful, uh, freshly pressed, made from fresh fruit, Mm -hmm. organic Mm -hmm. marmalades, orange, lemon, and blood orange. Uh Another excellent product we have. It is also on our website. It is also on our store locator. And a lot of the stores that carry our oil carry our marmalade. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I really recommend those. Those are so good for you also. All that Absolutely. Oh my gosh. But it was really a plus. I, you know, I was looking forward to the olive oil, but when I saw that, it was like, oh, well. So yes, because I haven't had a chance to enjoy a blood orange in Italy for quite some time now because of all this. So that was great. Sounds yes. great. I don't want to hold you up anymore. Thank you so much. And Thank you. Uh, definitely Thank you. people need to you need to try this olive oil it is just i i can't describe it you just have to go out there and try it thanks salvatore we'll be in touch shortly and we will uh, be in touch and i look yeah. forward to coming back on your show maria oh, you'll have me this is definitely yes definitely yes keep me posted on anything also okay salvatore take care thank you Thanks for joining me and spending some time with me for the Maria Liberati show. And thanks to my producer, Brittany Roselle. Thanks to Kim Oglesby at Beach Girls PR. Thanks to my production intern, Peter Saldino. And again, thanks for listening in and joining us. And you can find me on my Facebook live stream. We do a stream each week, a video, a live video version of my some of my interview guests for my podcast this week we did an interview a live video interview with salvatore russo tac also where he tells us more about bono extra virgin olive oil and you get to know him a little bit more from that but you can find all the video interviews on my facebook account you can find me at chef maria liberati my twitter account is maria liberati with a capital m instagram you can find 
find me there at Maria Liberati and LinkedIn. You can find me at M for Maria Liberati. And you can also find me at my blog at marialiberati.com where we usually share some information from the episodes of my podcast so you can follow up on my blog. You can also find my book series, my Gourmand World award-winning book series at marialiberati.com and anywhere books are sold. The book series is a culinary memoir series, so it's not just recipes, it's also lots of charming stories to read, as well as recipes that coordinate with them that go along. You know, it's a pairing of recipes and stories, so you get a full experience. There's The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, which was the first book, which is a coffee table book. Again, they all contain stories and recipes. Then The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, Holidays and Special Occasions second edition. That's the one that really that won the Gourmand World Cookbook Award, international award that was given in Paris. And the basic art of Italian cooking da Vinci style. If you never knew it, da Vinci was actually really a foodie among all of his other major talents. And then there is the basic art of series, which is all about different topics, the basic art of pizza, the basic art of coffee, the basic art of pasta, the basic art of creating a Tuscan wedding, the basic art of cocktails, the basic art of Christmas dinner, the basic art of experiencing Venice. Until next time, peace, love, and pasta.